Hello, I'm Julie Gardner. I'm the executive producer of Doctor Who. I'm Andy Pryor. I'm the casting director of Doctor Who. And I'm <coughs> Finlay Robertson. And uh, in this episode, I play Larry. So, Finn, what was it like when the call came in saying, will you audition for Doctor Who? I had to stand up. I stood up very quickly and went, oh, my God. Did you salute? <laughs> uh, I didn't salute, but I, I got very excited. And, um, uh, yeah, and then t- I told my girlfriend and was very, very uh, over the moon. And then was that because and then... did you used to watch as a child? I did. I was a, um, sort of a Tom Baker, uh, oh. Tom Baker, Peter Davison uh, vintage. And... Um, I was thinking actually that yeah, well, before it, uh, it sort of it, it perfectly encapsulated everything that I was as a kid, which is sort of slightly out there, slightly eccentric, um, but and wanting to be able to fight monsters, um, yeah. And so that was that was what it's all about. So yeah, I loved it as a kid. Might I add that Finn also had the dignity not to tell me he was a bit of a fan until <laughs> after he got the job. Do you get many people auditioning, Andy, for you who come in and you know you can you can tell? I the do. Fan There's something in the you. eyes very often <laughs> when people come in um, for an audition for Doctor Who. Um, often I know because of the letters that I get. I know in advance, but um, I think most people like Finn have got the sense to kind of audition for the job rather than get overexcited in the room. Yeah. Right. So we're into a marvellous pre-title. Uh, this episode is written by Stephen Moffat. It's an unusual episode because it's the episode that we film largely without David Tennant or Freema Adjuman. Um, it's an episode that we double bank, uh, so it normally plays out as episode 11 on each season that we do of Doctor Who, um, just as a way for us to um, just keep the schedule moving. So while we film this episode, David and Freema were filming other episodes at the same time. So is that tricky for you, Andy, when you're double banking? you uh, juggling lots of kind of schedules for actors. In terms of time, it is quite tricky. Um, purely the, the volume of work increases around the time we're double banking, which it does for everybody. But, um, you know, as with last year and this episode, there's the tone of it, you know, is slightly different to a lot of the rest of the series, so that makes it quite, quite exciting, quite a challenge. And you also get these fantastic, meaty parts for guest actors mm. so you know it's it fun to cast Finn did you miss the doctor or was it um, uh, well I met him on the, I met David on the on the, the first day when I, I, I came in and stuff but it was it was slightly unusual because everyone was saying so what do you do with the doctor and how do you meet the doctor and I said well <laughs> I met him in the trailer in the morning for makeup and then and then it's just he, he's not there and that's that's the episode and then they'd want to know more about that why he wasn't there mm. and and etc etc um, but it. Uh, did you feel the pressure of um, the secrecy? <laughs> I did. A lot of people. A lot of people. Somebody asked me the question. So, what do the monsters do? Are they real or are they? Um, and do they, do they have wheels? And somebody. And I said, <laughs> okay. no. They, the monsters don't have wheels. He went, oh, that means so much. That 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 really tells me so much. <laughs> but they about, are real. But they so are real. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> mm. So, okay, so this was how we got bits of the Doctor and mm. Martha in. So this very kind of clever Easter egg device. Yes. So he was kind of present with you, Finn, even when he wasn't. Yeah, he was. He was there. I mean, his, his, yeah, his face was there. And there's, oh, there's Lucy. Had that's you worked with Lucy Gaskell. before? I hadn't, no. Um, I had to, uh, I had to uh, meet her um, because obviously I had to sound something like her uh, in terms of being in the show her brother mm. yeah <clears throat> um so that was important but i never i hadn't i'd never worked with her no and how did you balance your accents how did i how did you balance your accents between i tried to sound uh, like her and um um oh good lord hello <laughs> <laughs> carry on talking yeah Jane. no it's, uh, <laughs> yes. is this the first time you've seen the episode it is yeah oh we're gonna uh, lose him andy he's are. gonna drift off like a tail. yeah no there's just this bit where i wish i'd yeah i wish i'd eaten uh i wish I'd... <laughs> our catering is very <laughs> the catering is marvelous <laughs> is it um, is it yes. terrifying being half naked in front of a crew or do you just kind of i've kind of i've done now? it a couple of times now actually and and it i was i was saying uh, i actually I'm not one of these people who does, you know, a thousand sit-ups before breakfast every day, but I do uh, a lot of the jobs I've done. I've ended up being being naked, and once you've done it once, mm. I did a theatre job where mm. I 
stood there naked in front of an audience for quite a, a long period of time. Wow. Once you've done it once, it's fine. That's going to exercise a few demons. It is, it in yeah. Theater. Mm. You do. You become quite comfortable with, mm. you know, um, with your body. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So we're in this extraordinary location, which was, I think, in Newport. I mean, we just found this. This yeah. house was in this state. I mean, it was, what was amazing, it's very scary, but they didn't need to kind of... They didn't really need to do much to it in mm. terms of they didn't need to, you it's know... It's not stick, a hell of a lot of dressing. No, it didn't need to stick, like, pumpkin heads or, you know, spooky crucifixes or anything. It was just there, you know. Um, pumpkin as, heads. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know, it's sort of, you know, the uh, Halloween stuff, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it was just it was just there, overgrown and and spooky. I didn't make it out to this location. Was it the same house interior and exterior? Yes, yes it, it was. was it was wasn't magical. It? it was like a fairy tale house. It was quite chilly at night. Was it? Um, oh, but I it bet. was. Uh, but it was. It was perfect. Really, it was really beautiful. Spooky. I mean, it was such a find. Yeah. I mean, we were in the tone meeting. We saw pictures of this. You know, with that outside, it's just gorgeous. It's like, do you remember that Great Expectations? I think it was the Tony Marchant one. Where the designer had a tree growing up in the middle of it yeah, years ago. Yeah, and it was felt I remember. like magical like that. Beautiful. I remember when this was found, Hetty MacDonald, the director, was extremely excited about this house. Mm. It does look great. Had you worked with Hetty before? Yes, I've worked with Hetty a couple of times um, on the film A Beautiful Thing many moons ago and In Land of Plenty, which she directed half of. And in fact, Richard Kant, this actor here, was in Beautiful Thing in a very small part. He's excellent. He's got such a period face. He's got a great face, hasn't he? Very, very expressive. And he's incredibly funny, which, you know, this isn't the most comic role, but, you know, his, his real strength is comedy. Oh, he just makes this part so much his own. It's, mm. it's you know, one scene and he's fantastic. And, of course, Kerry Mulligan, who's a wonderful Sally Sparrow. Yeah, she's great, Kerry. She really is. And so self-possessed for one so young still. She's um, still only 22, but playing, you know, these mm. huge roles and on stage as well, mm. you know, she's fantastic on stage. <gasps> so that's our first glimpse of our scary angel. They look great, don't they? Finn, what, what was it like working with the scary angels? Because watching the, watching the rushes every day was hilarious because they were so brilliant. The performers had been still, but every so often you'd see the wobbling. It was extraordinary. It was, a, I mean, a real, uh, just uh, admiration for them to be able to... I mean, they were all physical performers, you know, and that's what they did. But still, just to, to witness it and there's the, the strength and the, the focus to, to say mm. still for that, that period of time is... Um, so what we have there, for anyone that doesn't know, is the angels were made by our um, physical effects company, Millennium Effects, who do all our prosthetics. And uh, as Finn says, they're real people. They are real, real people. people. encased. Mm. Unbelievable. Were there any completely static statues? or were There no. were, no. As well, but they were, all, they were all people. I think there may have been one. I hope I'm not. <laughs> yes, no, no, about. one in the background. We have we have our hero angel statues. Yeah, hero yeah. angels, and then our, our padding in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then it's all gone strange. It has gone strange, hasn't it? So this this episode was based on a short story that Stephen Moffat had written. Oh, he didn't for an know annual. that. Yes. Which was Sally Sparrow was a young girl trying to communicate with the doctor mm. through writing on the walls, and so he used that as a basis. When for did he for write this. that? Uh, about eighteen months ago. So it was tied in with with you know the reincarnation of Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, so there it, we go. It's such Sally a great Sparrow. idea this episode. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And how how do you both think it rates on our scary factor? I th I think it's quite creepy, and I mean you know. As with a lot of the series, there's some of the some of the episodes stray into slightly more adult mm. um, fear. I mean, I, I do, it's always hard to tell what, I think, what um, is going to scare. I think you, uh, uh, I think this would really, really scare a, a child, <laughs> um, mm. and an adult would appreciate the the simplicity and the or essentially the genius of the of the idea. It's such mm. a simple simple uh, concept. But uh, the fact that these things are all over the place, we see uh, angels and statues um, 
I, I think makes it sort of universal yeah. to yeah. Uh, to a young youngster mm. who uh, who would look at them again and go, oh, yeah. maybe what if? Mm. I haven't entirely expressed that. No, no, well. that's clear. But it, uh, <laughs> it, it's it's because they're everywhere. And when I read it, and particularly the last four pages yes. of the script, I went, Ugh! and I imagined being a kid. Um, and being really, really Yeah, it's really real scared. stuff of nightmares. I mean, even in the trail for this week's episode, yeah. that the image of David of the Doctor don't warning blink. them, don't, don't blink, blink. It's, that's quite powerful. And we're going to obviously get to that with Finn for later. Mm. It's the difficulty of not blinking. Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> quite. <laughs> <laughs> Done magnificently, but well, let's hold, that, hold off on that. The curiosity, I had an actor in for an audition yesterday who didn't blink at all. It was wow. most odd. Really? He, it wasn't required of him, it's just that's the way it worked out. Was, wow. was he a, a Doctor Who fan, do you think? I don't think so. Oh? No, I don't think so. Hmm. So how many, Andy, you've been casting Doctor Who since it came back, mm-hmm. so you're about to go into season four. How many people do you cast on average across a season of 13 in well, Christmas I, special? I did work that out for this series, yeah. um, and I think the figure was something like 108 Hundred and eight, hundred and ten for this series and the and the Christmas special for the Runaway Bride. And how many people do you think you audition though? It's sort of hard to say because there are certain parts. Obviously, with our much bigger name actors, we don't audition them. But mo- you know, the vast majority of the parts we do. I'd say it's anything from three to six or eight per role. Per role, right? So you know, across the series, I'd say that averages out at. Something like four or five hundred. And how does how does casting Doctor Who compare to other jobs, TV jobs that you've cast? It's really very different to other jobs, particularly series, because it doesn't have. I mean, it has a format, but it doesn't have a formula, and that's what's exciting mm. about it from my point of view. That every episode or every two part story is different, and it's sort of like coming to a new film each time and. That enables you to keep it fresh. You know, the mixture of comedy and drama is... is I, I can't think of anything else that I've worked on that has that kind of variety within it. Um, mm. So it does keep it fun. It does keep it exciting. I've worked on the series before where I've got to series two or three and you're starting to see the same kinds of parts come up again and again, you know, if it's a cop show or if it's a you know, a medical, prece- some kind of procedural drama. But on this, you know, everything's a surprise every time mm. I get a script, which makes it fun. And Finn, did it, working on it, did it feel like a, a different type of show? or It or did, in the, in the way that uh, you were very aware that you were joining part of a sort of a, a lineage and then there was a giant oh. heritage, almost mm. an, an institution. I mean, I had this thing where I was on the train and somebody... Just saw my script and said, "Are you mm. are you working on Doctor Who?" And I went, "Yes." And he was suddenly <laughs> animated, and you're Did aware when you from your grip. Well, all <laughs> the crew the crew know, uh, and they want to talk about the, the you know uh, they want to talk about the series, and and then everybody you talk to, even if they haven't watched it in you know uh, on avid fans know its mm. place in society and the history of entertainment, and it's such an iconic um, figure. And um, I was, speaking I'm, of iconic figures, I think somebody's about to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I wonder who you mean. <laughs> oh, we're um, sorry, you, you were no, saying. No, no, we're building. We're building to your arrival. There we're, he is. We're, yes. We're, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was, and it was. Um, yeah. Did you mean this iconic? You have this clothes. Icon. You have clothes on now. I have clothes on. I've really, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm very scruffy in this. Is it scary seeing yourself for the first time? Do uh, you, every time you see yourself on the No, screen, normally it's it? fine. I mean, this is obviously a particular look, uh, sort of grungy. I'm, I have a beard currently, but um, I'm a little bit, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit smarter, I like to think, mm-hmm. in real life <laughs> than this uh, chap. I think that's true. But I, I could, I could, I've met people like this and I've certainly hung out with people like this in my are time. you happy with watching yourself are you fine watching yourself normally i mean i'm uh, <laughs> i'm aware i'm i'm kind of aware that, that the more i do it oh i've done that there i do that thing i do or i yeah. do yeah. that my little trick my little um thing that i do right. but normally i'm fine i'm not i'm certainly not 
Oh, I can't stand to look at myself. A lot of actors mm. can't. They can't yeah. bear it. Well, I have enough uh, vanity. <laughs> uh, Nothing to, wrong with that. To go, <laughs> oh, right. I certainly, yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this was in the, in the shop. It was marvellous. They dressed up this shop and they did lots of different uh, DVD covers. Mm. Um, and I think the, uh, the designers had a bit of a... A giggle about it. There was one. There was one. The one I remember was the uh, about banana rustling, or the <laughs> the banana industry, or banana smuggling. And it was it was billed as the third most uh, potent banana movie of the year. Oh, that's brilliant. And uh, I just, I remember David asked me what were the other two, and I yes, I couldn't answer because Russell T Davis and I were constantly saying we can't, you know, we can't advertise, we can't, you know, you've got to no. create your titles. We've got to be very careful. No. So that whole DVD list, which becomes such an important kind of plot point, mm, mm. you never know what Sally no. Sparrow's DVD no. top ten are. I wonder what they would be. Oh, <laughs> well, we could have played that game throughout the podcast. We could have, yeah, we could yeah. have done. You're coming to it too late. We're 15 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. One was to do with I don't know. <laughs> well, we've done that already, haven't we? <laughs> Pumpkins. Pumpkins. We'll get back to the pumpkins. Yeah, yeah. Pumpkins later. So it's such a clever script. It is, yeah. And you kind of you're working so hard as you go as you go through it, particularly with the Easter egg. Yeah, I wasn't and, aware of that. As a, I'm not a, a DVD buff. I mean, I've you know, I got wasn't a, aware got of, sort of a fair few at home, but I um, I'm not a. Uh, I don't have reams and reams of them at home, so I'd never heard of it as a mm. as the a phenomenon. Concept, yeah, but. Um, it's a, a great of, idea. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people I've talked to said, yes, I do know about mm. that, you know, even mm. if you don't know it specifically. Oh, oh. I'm just seeing her communicating with the Doctor. Mm. I love the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone, I've gone. I'm, I'm into the episode now. I have a little and chat he's trapped with him. I know. You know. He needs her. I can't remember. How long did we take to shoot... The doctor's stuff. It was sort of half a day. Or it was. Oh, it was a morning. It was. Like, it was yes. really early on, and it was. And we came through and we read it uh, together just to get a general idea the of, the, of the timing. The timing, because obviously, later on, once that had been shot and edited and put onto mm. the DVD, we had to. Yeah, yeah, we had to approximate the timings. Otherwise, it, and yes, I'm, I was regretting not paying that much attention. <laughs> I could have paid more attention that day if I'd oh, realised later on how important that was going to be. Yeah. Now. I love this location that Hetty McDonald and the location team found. It's got such scale. The Where scale is this? of Do you it. Know? I don't, other than Cardiff. Everything was that very, is, very central. But that, a big the scale of that window for that rain shot. And then the blink. Here we go, going right in there on her eyes. Oh and they're not there mm. anymore. So it does scary. look great. It really looks. And like we a had film. so many discussions. The next shot, because as well as our prosthetic, practical um, hero angels, these angels were helped by us here by the yeah. mill, a special effects company, and the scale of them, the size of them on that shot, was endlessly discussed. Here's Michael Obiora. Michael Obiora. Very as, different mood to as, that, that, it, that scene in Hotel Babylon. Yes, because yes. I'd worked with him on Hotel Babylon. Just oh, did so you? Yes, sort of, of course. Yeah. He's it's playing an extremely camp. Extremely, yes. A hotel worker. Ah. Uh, I think he's a bit more, he was enjoying this uh, sort of tough guy cop. Yeah. Yes. Well, most actors like a bit of variety. They do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so charming together, these two. Mm. They. Oh, and it's the blue box. Look at it. It looks, it looks like it's been in storage for ages. It's kind of grunged down, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, so will you be watching on Saturday night, Finn? He's got a big do. party, got some people coming Have over. Have you? Yeah, it's a Doctor party. Who party. It's kind of, it's a do Doctor Who party, and it's also a final of Joseph party. So oh, there's indeed. a big... A double whammy. There's a big double whammy, yeah. But this, of course, will be the highlight of Oh, yeah, this is, this is what it's going to be. And I may... I've been waiting for quite a long time to buy a new telly, a big telly. Mm -hmm. And this well, might this the be the opportunity. Surely, surely get out yeah. there. Perfect excuse. Yeah.
Oh. And so will people be quiet when they're watching it with you? I hope or will so. it all be drunken? No, it won't be drunk because it's, <laughs> it's a quarter past seven, isn't it? I, I know, think but even, yeah, no, it, but no, it will be. The excitement, it'll, it'll be, be drunken, drunken later. The speech will be banned. Adrenaline. Yeah, speech will be banned. Oh, oh, hello, scary business, look, look at out. Look at this. Don't they look beautiful? They do. I mean, they're just that classic angel shape, aren't they? Very rude. And the lighting's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. that's really well isn't it? Oh, Michael, poor don't Billy do Shitter. it. What are you doing? You've got such don't! a sense of dread. Oh, look, he's going to blink. He just don't want to blink. I mean, it works really well this episode because we we don't have many special effects. No. I mean, the the, the mill, a special effects company, did a lot of work stabilizing the angels. Mm -hmm. But really, beyond that, it's all practical in the moment. I mm. think that sometimes adds to the scariness. It's all practical and physical. I think it does, and I mean, to a degree, it's a. Oh. Yeah, there he goes. To agree, to a degree, it's an, a thing inspired by economy but actually it adds to the variety of the program doesn't it that when you yeah. have the odd episode that doesn't mm. need effects yes. and it, it encourages ingenuity in terms of the idea the idea mm. is so simple yeah mm. and that's why it's a great idea mm. um oh I'm just gonna go back in look at that rain it looks gorgeous doesn't it, it does oh no poor billy he's gone See you later. See you later, old man. It's beautiful. Mm. Hetty McDonald's very filmic. She is. Those moments. Scale of it. Oh. And by about this point, you're desperate to see the doctor. You are. Yeah, it's true. It's just, it's just very, very nicely judged. And Martha. Oh. And this is where it feels so adult as a script, that mm. suddenly it's about loss and living mm. your life and coming back to meet the girl you loved when you're old. It's very true, Finn, that when we do the final mix, Russell T. Davis, Phil Collison and I, we cry so much now. Three. We're unashamed. Brilliant. We're like on season three and we don't even pretend anymore. <laughs> I literally, you know, proper, proper kind of so sobbing and snot. Oh, great. It's really, we don't even stop ourselves. Once we start, we just, just keep going. Just let it go. Just, yeah. yeah. Quite so, good to have a cry now and oh, again. Yeah. Well, every week at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like Holly Hunter in Broadcast News. <laughs> <laughs> that is my role model yeah. in all yeah. things. Yeah. I'm all for that. Shut yourself away once a yeah. day. Have a good cry. Yeah, have a good, let it all out. But this next section with old Billy, we we really did all cry yeah. rather painfully. Mm. It read as a very yeah, as in the script it was, a, it flagged itself up as this mm. is the bit mm. where, you know, we have a bit of a cry and then fast forward to it. Let's let's it's just this get it all together and let's have a big you know. Mm. It's the thing about there's no going back. And yeah. Here we go. And the choice of this location. Look at that polished floor. Mm. I mean, on the rushes, you could even see it just on mm. you know, ungraded rushes. It looked so gorgeous. Very normal hospital, but with mm -hmm. that bit of magic. Look at that. <gasps> that looks great. Yeah, it's a great show. Oh, no, poor Billy. Now played by... Yeah, by Louis Mahoney. Mahoney. It's a gorgeous actor. He was telling me <coughs> in the bar when we stayed over that he was featured uh, when he was just starting out. He got a call, got a very small part in this sitcom that mm. was going out, and um, and it served him well for the rest of his life because the name of that sitcom was Faulty Towers, and he uh. was in the Germans episode. <coughs> oh. Was he? And he said it's it's been very good for him. Well, I bet. I'll have to have a look at that. Was again. he one of the guests? I don't know. I'm assuming so. Yeah, yeah. In in one of the guests, I think in that um, 
in, I, so in I hope that's true. Scene. I mean, mm. if it was a lie, then obviously. <laughs> uh, but he's out Very it. foolish. Yeah, he is out. He's a fraud. He is. His career's been the based on knows. fraud. It's been like his pension. He just, you know, every now and again, the check will come through. Lovely. <laughs> I'm oh, sure it's brilliant. true. He's a lovely man. He's a, he's a real gent, Louis. Oh, this is gorgeous, this scene. Oh, and we're building to one of the most extraordinary lines of dialogue. I remember when I first read it on the script about he's going to die when the rain stops. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We've gone, haven't we? We have. It's just all the years he's been waiting. Mm. To tell the story. Mm. And we're still not seeing her DVD list. No. No, because we can't. No. I think there is a game, a little spin-off kind of quiz about yeah. Sa- Sally Sparrow's <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> I find Carrie so watchable. She's, um... Oh, she's so expressive. Yeah, I mean, yeah She's so it. still there, but you're just pulled in, aren't you? Exactly. She doesn't, you know, well, like all, all good actors, she doesn't have to do an awful lot no. to to draw you in mm. Mm. Finn what do you like doing most do you like TV world most or theatre or is it I like most- um, I like uh, the sort of the setup of a, of a TV and um, a film setup what I find really interesting is that when you're doing theatre you're sort of in a room with a bunch of actors and a director and it's all about sort of getting the acting right mm. and <clears throat> the process of that whereas and then you kind of meet the designers they're sort of somehow and the lighting people are somehow on the on the outside and you meet mm. them at the end and they say, right, here is our play, and then they would say, well, here are your lights, and here is your set, and blah, blah. whereas in a, in a TV setup, everybody's there in the room at the same time. Mm. Now, I, with skills that I don't have, and I can't mm. light a scene, and I can't mm. record sound, and I can't find a location, mm. but we're all there in that moment, concentrating in that one second yeah. to make mm. that that that, that th- moment of 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 film that will then be like a tapestry put together. And I think that's really all these skilled people all focusing on that one. Time. Does some of the technical stuff get in the way? Like hit your hit your mark. It, it's once you've got your head round it. I mean, there's a couple yeah. of times where you know when people say, you know, can you walk off and do a banana? And you sort of say, I have no idea <laughs> what you're. But it just means obviously walk in a kind of a curve mm. banana shape. Uh, but but once you've got your head round that, that's that's mm. sort of fine. But I actually enjoy talking to mm. the technical people about lenses and cameras and stuff. I think yeah. most actors find that quite daunting because in this country we don't have much of a tradition of training in no, camera no. camera work. Most people's training is theatre based, and you know they really have to learn on the job. Um, yeah, and it can be very dependent, as you say, on the technicians that yeah. are around, how willing yeah. they are to be helpful. And most, I mean, most crews certainly. You know, if you're if you show a sort of willingness to to learn and, and ask questions, they'll mm. say, "Well, mm. we do this," and they because they're you know. Because a lot of them are geeks, and geeks love talking <laughs> about their stuff and yeah. about their. And speaking I love of, geeks. Speaking of geeks, yeah. Geeks take over geeks the world. Are good. <laughs> Don't you think that's geeks true rule. of life? That yeah. when, you, when you're at school, when you're a teenager, and you want to be, you know, in the netball team, and you're never picked, it's mm. clearly to uh, me, never, <laughs> never, ever picked. But. It is the geeks that take, end up taking over the world. Right. It's true, it's true. And when you're a, when you're young, you don't realise that. You think no. it's the people who are good at sports. Oh, good at mm. everything. And then, you the know, all us, but it's the ones that are obsessive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that was just, you know, maybe we like to tell ourselves that. <laughs> we were no, geeks. I think it's true. I, I think, think there's a lot of truth true. in that. So now we're into the last third of the episode. Yeah. Uh, Sally Sparrow is activated. Um, there's a kind of real energy drive, I think, after uh, Billy's yeah. death. And now you're confronting your fear. Mm. So here you are, face to face with the doctor at last. Yeah. And then it all starts. I, I, it all starts getting out of Did Larry's you have to... hands. He sort of doesn't know. You know. Wait a minute. Now he's talking to her. And uh, did you have to do lots of takes? Uh, it was a bit tricky because we did have to get the timing yeah. right, and um, it was yeah, it was a little bit uh, problematic. But uh, we got there in the end. And a lot of <laughs> playback and yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, playback! It's the death of hope. When you're watching, when you're watching rushes, you're just like, yeah. "Oh no, they're lining it up again." Okay. Are we ever going to get through this? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Was this? Did this take a long time to film? This, this was a. This was a quite. Yeah. This was. 
laborious. Th- this was a big night, uh, and it was because it's a huge it's such a key scene. scene anyway. And mm. uh, Hetty, I think, quite rightly wanted to not to chop it up and compartmentalise it. She did want to keep the integrity of the whole, like a th- I mean, theatre background. You know, mm. keep it the reality rooted in playing the whole thing out, yeah, like a piece of theatre. And so, you know, it did It did take us a while. But once we were up to speed, we sort of really saw the value of it. And it, it, I think it paid off. I yeah. Um, mm. But it is very strange, because normally... Because, yes, there are two actors in the room, but there's also a third. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that and it, that's weird. He's, 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 he's playing with It's us. just so clever as it moves into yeah. being a genuine conversation between yeah, yeah. three people. And you're not looking remotely cold... No, we had a lot of uh, I had a lot of layers on underneath. This was I think it was December. Yes. Yeah, it was late December, and it was very um, um, yeah. And I obviously, as a result of the temperature, I decided that my character would move his arms a lot. <laughs> uh, it was obviously a character choice. <laughs> that was a character choice. choice. Yeah. yeah. It works. Oh, I'm, I'm loving the arm yeah. movement. Yeah, <laughs> it's always it's always good. Geeks do that. Yeah, it's completely. So I'm told. Andy does it all the time. I do it all the it? time. Yeah. And obviously on a, on a show like this that shoots, you know, we have a fairly tight schedule, mm. but, and our directors like to rehearse as much as possible, and I know Hetty likes to rehearse. Did you, did you manage to grab a fair amount of time to do that before you shot these scenes? We did. We got, we got, we got a bit in. And, um, it's uh, such a luxury in yeah. TV schedules, unfortunately. Yeah. But. No, totally. But you've got, to be, you've got to be sort of on top of your lines when yeah. you when you get there because um because yeah it could all uh, oh it just doesn't work otherwise yeah. at all no. it's it's mm. terrifying because yeah particularly as as it's david had always recorded stuff. his <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was yeah but he used autocue for this <laughs> section didn't I know. he there yeah. we are. i've outed her <laughs> I've outed david tennant her. didn't learn all of his lines yeah there we go that's a headline <laughs> I mean, poor guy. He was recording two other episodes. He was. At the same to be time, to be but... fair, it's <laughs> not like he was lying <laughs> around doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Creepy angels coming in. Yeah, yeah, they come. So now, of course, we are building. Let's let's start the build up to yeah. you and keeping your eyes open. Yes. Because it does become vital to our story that mm. you don't blink. Yes. How hard was it? Because looking at the rushes, it looked physically nightmarish. It was. It was pretty tough. There's always. Uh, I remember as a as a youngster, there's a there's an REM video called uh, for the song Radio Song, and there's a bit in it where G- Michael Stipe is singing mm. directly to camera, and there's one long section where he just looks straight down the lens and does it for about a minute, and he just wow. beholds the thing. And I thought that was when I was whatever you know, fourteen. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> And now I have my own chance. Yes. Did you <laughs> I did a little bit, yeah. You're a this is, this is why we cast Finn, you see. Clearly. We knew about it. He came <laughs> we, in, he it's told on my spotlight special, website. Special skills. Special skills. Not blinking. Not blinking. Non-blinking. Non-blinking. <laughs> and no, it, it was tough. I mean, I think if you blink a lot before <laughs> and you, you drink lots of water, mm-hmm. then I think that helps. But also... It, why it, lots of water? Uh, yeah. if, if you get dehydrated. Yes, you can't be dehydrated. Yeah. You can't be drinking lots of coffee. And did you know that before you did it? Did someone advise no, you? No, I, well, I, 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 I sort of out? guessed, uh, and I kind of, and it seemed to work. But yeah, no, it was tough. You see, there now off you few... go. Here we are. And How I'll... long is it? Do we? Do we should have set the timer? And you are looking <laughs> marvelously, magnificently scared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, of course, the minute someone tells you to do something, exactly. Like that. Oh, yeah. nightmare. <laughs> This is so scary. I mean, I, th- I remember even reading it, I found it quite scary, this sequence. Yeah, that it's face. really well judged. Each cut of, of the angels getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> Still not blinking. <laughs> no more arm flaying around. No, no, no. You, you I have really to just are. concentrate all yeah. my energy on producing... Small amounts of uh, liquid over my eyes to. Of course, if they'd had more time to think about it, they could have always blinked one eye at a time. That is true. <laughs> oh, Andy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's just genius. It'll be on the message boards. <laughs> uh, it's well. just genius. Oh, I'm. Someone, gonna... someone else will come up with that yeah, eventually. I'm going to so... phone Stephen Moffat as soon as we get out of here. Say, so, uh, that's it. You're blown. I've, I've undermined the whole oh. premise of his script. <laughs> 
but it would look a little silly. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So, yes, so there's lots of uh, sort of uh, eyes versus eyes mm. yeah. stuff. Mm. The shots are great. Oh, was it very strange being that close to the prosthetic angel? It, it was, yes. No uh, fits of the giggling? No fits of the giggling. <coughs> um, because, yes, they are scary, and also you're also aware that there's a human being <coughs> under there. Mm. Uh, sweating. Uh, sweating. They weren't cold. <laughs> physical pain, yeah. yeah. We do put people through oh, it on this show. Oh, they're amazing. They're yeah. absolutely amazing. Um, and then... And then... Make it worse, go into the basement. You've got to go into the basement, yeah. you know. has to be done. It's like Silence of the Lambs. Oh, here we go. And here we are. And this was filmed, yeah, a couple of days later. And um, when I got there, it was the most, yeah, glorious. Was this still at the location? I don't actually no, know. No, this, this was, was... Where was this? This was at the... The studio just around the corner, I think, That's from where right. the TARDIS is. That's right. So, was this um, your first scene with the TARDIS? Uh, it was. <gasps> yes, I was. I was. I was very excited. And we did um, quite a bit of work in the edit on this section because, again, we didn't use the mill on this mm. section at all, other than to stabilise the angels. Yeah. So we had to go do really fast edit cuts, mm -hmm. and you'll see the like, the kind of lighting change as we go. I mean, again, it's, what a marvellous moment. <laughs> it's so terrifying. Not quite Perfect. sure how they can turn the lights off. They just can. That's they just, just can. At this stage, you're not asking those There you was, know, There was in an early script, there was a Stephen Moffat line uh, very early on about, you know, why has why this house got electricity, which is all about they live quite comfortably. Yeah. And, we took, and it was built into that, but we took it out. So there we go. We've got a kind of fast cut here. Yeah, cut, cut, cut. Brilliant. And then... Uh, Yes, when it couldn't get worse. Where are we now? Yeah. And what was it like for This was extraordinary. This was uh, absolutely marvellous. Am I... Yes. I don't think people fail to be thrilled every time they step onto it's that set for the first yeah. time. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And, um... Ed Thomas, our production designer, did such a beautiful job he did. that. Yeah, four years ago he made that. Wow, that's it's slightly terrifying. To think it is, that's it, is, four years it is ago. extraordinary, isn't it? Or <laughs> well, three and a half years ago, it's yeah. amazing. And then we had to do running around stuff. Yeah. Like how you imagine they did it on <laughs> Star Trek. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've never seen a film like this being shot. Do they shout right, left, you know? All that kind of thing, or you kind just sort of, of yeah, you kind of do it. You rehearse it. it, and you say we'll go over there and over there. But I do have a memory of I think Hetty going right, <laughs> left, <laughs> like doing a drill. It was marvellous. <laughs> Andy, how could you even ask this offend? This is the man that doesn't blink. Uh, you can do true. a bit you of right mark, and yeah, left absolutely. acting. I mean, you know, piece of cake. <laughs> oh, and then and then the dematerialisation. <gasps> Brilliant. Yeah. Aww. That's great image with the linked fingers. Yeah, yeah. And then... Oh, and then they're well. fine. Though you're still keeping your eyes open. I am, I well, like, just in case. Very important. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm you've good. mastered it, you just want to keep it yeah, in. Yeah, I do, I want <laughs> to, uh, yeah. I'm going to run with it. Brilliant. And... Uh, what was the thing that... What was the scene you filmed last... On your schedule, can you remember? I think it was this. It was, was this. It? This was the very last stuff. Yeah, this Aww. was the last stuff we did, um, just before Christmas. Um, and uh, it was, you know, that was it. Thank you very much. We have defeated them. <laughs> so now you've redesigned home. the shop. Yeah. Well, all, all sorts of things. Have restocked. Happened. Yeah. We've restocked. We've got new things. Carrie's done her hair differently. You're I still haven't enough. had a shave. No. <laughs> but I have bought a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have washed my hair. Yeah. Progress. Once, once or twice. This was quite early on in the shoot, actually. Right. And, yeah. So I... Uh, <laughs> the accent was, uh, was, was still a work in progress. Aww. But it's, you know, I, I, when I read this, I was very touched that, you know... That they get together. Yeah. And, um, oh, we have to. I think so. Yes. Because I think I have a th my theory is that you know, he's the solid one and she's the the maverick who yes. goes out. Mm. And yes. I think that's the way true. I expressed it previously was that 
he's the bread and she's the spread sort of thing and that's the perfect marriage that's very poetic of you i like that it'll be in their vows <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> I think she'd be more likely to travel the stars with the doctor. I think. I think so. Yeah, but he'd be waiting at home, stoking the fires, making sure it's all you know, all holding a candle for exactly. And then who should pull up? Uh, I love. I love the touch of it. They're in a cab. I think that was a a marvelous touch. It really. really And the arrows, the bows and and arrows. Where did they come from? It's just fantastic. It's just just a perfectly pitched idea. The fact that you rarely see them taking any conventional form of transport. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Oh, and so she gets all her answers. Yeah. I'm turning into Jack and Ori here, aren't I? I'm <laughs> back in the scene. <laughs> but this was, because this was quite, this is where we saw the Doctor Who phenomenon, the, the people sort of surrounding this scene when we shot it in the, mm. in the street. Was it was, mad? Yeah, it was. And as soon as they shouted, cut, it was boomf, they were on him, saying, sign this, hello, think yeah. you're lovely, give us a kiss, give us a kiss. Um, he's it was so incredible. Great. David is so brilliant with he's people. Very he loves gr- he's it. very he, great. He loves, he loves, he's so yeah. kind to people. Yeah. He does, and you know, to be fair, there are a lot of people who travel for miles, yes. and I don't quite know what they do with the rest of their time, you know. Oh, stop being mean, they watch <laughs> Doctor Who like us. <laughs> <laughs> what would we be doing if we weren't working on it? We'd be at home We'd watching probably the be videos. Watching it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'd be out in the streets stalking David. <laughs> <laughs> and then the look between them, oh. and then... Oh. Right, hey. Hello. And then the hand. Look. Yeah. And your yeah. life's changed. And Larry Nightingale deserves it. Yeah, I think he so. Does. He's, he's got some skimmed milk as well. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> and there they are. There they are. Brilliant. Oh. And that's lovely. Sparrow and Nightingale. Sparrow Nightingale. What a touch. And then... Oh, and then Jess, when you're relaxing. About. Jess, you know, don't take your eye off the ball, kids. Yeah. This is what you were saying at the beginning, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. It's, 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 the, it's the everyday, the familiar. You see them, you see them. And it, it, and it takes it out of the, you've been watching a television episode yeah. and a fantasy. And now a whole generation, every time they pass yes. the church, you'll be looking for yes. yeah. this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, kids going to school, you want them to be staring at statues. Yeah. Menacingly. <laughs> with fear in their eyes and Indeed, certainly yeah. not blinking certainly no, not certainly blinking. Not. exactly so hey how marvellous to do a podcast with you now should we explain pumpkin we should probably explain the prize pumpkin. the winning prize goes to Finn for getting the word of the day into the commentary yeah. it was a slightly dubious use of the word pumpkin but I did I challenge how in, how in what, in what ways was that dubious <laughs> it was a little bit shoehorned in I said they could have dressed the flats in a scary way, in an obvious way, by getting, you know, pumpkin heads or... Yeah, the Halloween lanterns, I guess so. And he's, yeah. he's not remotely competitive, is he? <laughs> the thing is, though, as soon as you said how the word... How did we know that Finn would win this competition? Yeah, as soon as you I, said I, the word, I knew how I yeah, was going was to get there. it in. Thank uh, you very much. You're Episode welcome. 10, how marvellous. That was it great. It rocks. 